Oh, uh, this player raised out of first. He's a Brazilian. I'm just gonna call and playing the trap here. Uh, that's a pretty good flop for the trap. Uh, I'm gonna check back, see what this dude does. The seven on the river that's a heart is kind of super bad for us. So if he bets, uh, I'm gonna check raise this. Um, just because, uh, I mean, obviously, better hands jam. Yeah, he got there. I'm just going to give it up. Uh, he's playing against a chip leader. He doesn't have fold equity. He knows that. So uh, it, it's, it's at least two pairs, so I'm just going to fold it. If this guy jams and he has aces, it's just too bad. But I'm playing this hand to trap, and I expect this player to be over aggressive. Uh, the call is fine. Uh, I think we make a bad bet. Do we make a bad bet here? Yeah, I think we make a bad bet, because we're never going to fold, right? And if, if we jam and he has 10 jack, he's never going to fold. So we're just going to go ahead and bet like we don't love it, and uh, call all jams. I mean, and if he has something that beats us, it's just too bad, but our hand is too strong, and our stack is too short to play it any other way. Um, it might look fishy. Uh, we're going to jam the queen nine, because we are on the bubble. It has enough equity versus 12 big blind stack. He has to be tight, obviously. We're obviously calling here. Show me king 10 jack. Two jacks. We trapped it. Check raising on the flop is what did that. Uh, it's a great hand. It's definitely a great hand. You definitely want to, uh, you know, putting this marker in, man, so you guys can replay that one later. But remember, the hand played out exactly as I was saying. He just had a hand that, you know, that's one of those ones where people go, well, what can call you? What can jam the turn? Well, the draw can jam the turn for one, but also a bad player. A bad player can call you on the flop and jam the turn. He could think we're just check, check raising on the draw, right? A lot of fun hands from yesterday. Ace queen in the small line. Uh, this player, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of close in chips, and this player had been not really that active, kind of solid. So uh, I decided not to three bet it. I mean, if somebody else had called, I definitely would have three bet. But it's okay to play the ace queen out of position. Uh, but versus a uh, player in early position with a solid opening range, uh, I think it's smarter just sometimes to just try to improve. Uh, that's not so much gambling as it is, you know, not overplaying my hand. You know, we're, we're going to have to see a flop sometimes with this hand. And out of position is a perfect opportunity because we also under-rep our hand. You know, so it's very unlikely we have ace-queen when there is no 3-bet. Now, with nobody else calling, I think it's very reasonable to do this a fair portion of the time. Something like, I think I'm doing this like 35-40% of the time rather than 3-betting. Uh, it might even be higher. Uh, I have to go back and look, but... So the big blind folds, so we're just heads up, which is great. Uh, we get just about the gin flop for us, and with five uh, and a half big blinds in the pot and a player who has only 20 big blinds, it looks like a big uh, SPR, like a stack to pot ratio. It's really not, though, because he's going to make a bet, and then he's not going to have much left, and then the pot's going to grow. Like, even if he just bets three here, right? And, uh, well, we'll just see what he bet. Let's, let's go to that. So he bets 1.9 which is a super under bet, right? That bet tells me one of two things. Either it's one of those, if you don't have anything you can't call, or I have the world. What world does he have here? You know what I'm saying? Over pairs, I guess. But even a guy with aces or kings, uh, at this spy in level, they're not gonna be playing to get all the money and even with 20 big blinds. Like, if we get all the money on the flop and you have aces here, this is the kind of spot where players at lower levels will fold aces because they're like, oh, this guy's got a set or something like that. Or they'll just always put you on a draw. So his small bet, I think this is one of those outdated tester bets that I, I talk about where it, it's, not use, it's not useful to find out where you're at uh, in a hand by betting because this gives you no information. Uh, if you don't know where you're at, you shouldn't be... Uh, betting at all just check so I check raise now from his perspective the hands I'm gonna be check raising are 10 jack you know the obvious draw uh, maybe a queen maybe an ace nine things like that but it's gonna be very interesting here uh, his response so he does call now remember he bet super micro which when bad players do this they or, or inexperienced players do this they think I'll bet super small with this good hand and it'll entice this guy to bluff at me. Well, that's also the problem with varying your bet size based on your hand strength, is you're getting different reactions from different people and you're putting too many different actions in. If you always bet standard on the same scenarios, like if he had bet just a regular third pot bet, 
I kind of don't know if he has aces, or kings, or ace-king, or tens, or fives, or, or nines. I, I kind of don't know. I kind of have to just call with my good hands, or decide that they're good enough to get him all in. Now, from our perspective, now that he's called our bet, uh, there's going to be 15 in the pot. It's going to be a one-to-one stack-to-pot ratio, so we're never folding top pair, top kicker here. And from our perspective, the point of raising on this flop was to get him committed, so that's why the bet is what it is. Like, a standard re-raise here would have been much bigger. Like, it would have been like seven or eight blinds because of a stack-to-pot ratio, or because of the size of the pot. But because he has so few chips, it doesn't take much to commit him to the pot. Like, this is one where he's going to make a call, and now he realizes, well, shit, I only have one-to-one -to, -one to the pot. You know, he's going to realize that after we make the bet. So, I think check raising on this flop is perfect, perfectly reasonable. What do we expect to get called by? All draws and pairs that are under a queen. Uh, if we get jammed on here, I think we can actually fold. Uh, because when he bets small and then we raise it, and then he jams us, he has a hand that he likes. That's usually aces or kings. When we get the call here, it's like he wants to see what's going to happen. But his hand is, in his mind, too good to fold. So I, I zeroed in on it in the video uh, and said he could have 10 jacks or a pair below queens. Um, then the six comes on the turn. We just bet small. And because if we just jam on him right here, he's, he's making that embarrassment call where it's like, I bet the flop, then I got check raised. If I fold here, I look like an idiot. Like, players will think that. So he makes the embarrassment call. When I bet this such small amount and don't just put him all in, it kind of looks like I'm bluffing. It's kind of looks like I'm holding back some chips so that in case I'm no good with my bluff, I can fold, right? So it's kind of like a player, it's the battle of who's presenting lowest self-esteem here. Like he, he's embarrassed, I'm bad bluffing, you know what I'm saying? But I just have the world here, so I'm trying to get him to jam. Uh, and he jams, and I pretty much snap called this uh, in real time, and uh, he just turned over pocket jacks, which makes a lot of sense, uh, not in this actual scenario, but it makes a lot of sense when you think about inexperienced players and the fact that they can't get away from jacks. We basically just walked him down the line. He made a bad uh, bet on the flop, so we made a bad raise on the flop. Then he made a bad call on the flop, and then the turn comes off and we make a bad bluff on the turn where we're actually value betting and then he makes a bad jam because this guy doesn't have anything, my jacks are good, and I'm gonna look really cool when he has a, a base nine, you know? And then I just snap him off and, oh shit, he had ace queen. Yeah, and it's because we kept our range wide by not three betting out of a small blind. That's how we got all the money. If we three bet and he jams pre-flop, I ain't calling, because he's out of first position, you know? So this is, this is a well-played hand, I think.